study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com perfect so i'm going to continue and go back to exodus um, in verse Can I share the screen? four, I'm going to be jumping real quickly. Um, oh. Verse four says, then you have said, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Now, I wanted to go because when, when again, I, and I mentioned this the past few studies, when we're reading the, the Tanakh and we're reading the Torah and the Prophets, um, there's always a picture of the gospel somewhere. There's always a picture of Messiah somewhere. So as in the past few studies, especially since we've been going through Exodus, it's all Messiahs everywhere. Um, I wanted to bring us back to the, the Luke 24 verses that mention the road to Emmaus, which shares a point with us from the Messiah, which expounds on the law and prophets. So Luke 24, 20, and starting at verse 27, it says, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he, being Yahushua, expounded to them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Now it came to pass, verse 30, now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So the reason I brought that up is because we're going to see the bread of heaven. Um, I'm gonna read a whole, you want to read a whole bunch of, it's like a whole bunch of John we're going to get into. John 6, there's so many verses here. So I'm just going to keep on going because this is a uh, really good stuff unless you want to read it. All right. So John 6, starting at verse 26, it says, Yahushua answered them and said, most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. He had just completed a miracle. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Yahushua answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who's, whom he sent. Therefore, they said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Yahushua said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven for the bread of God is he who comes down from the heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Yahushua said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. All, uh, excuse me, but I, but I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe all that the father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the father who sent me that all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up on the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the son and believes in him may have everlasting life. Hallelujah. And I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews, the Yahudim, then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Hmm. And they said, is not this Yahushua, the son of Yosef, whose father and Mary we know? How is it then he says, I have come down from heaven? Yahushua therefore answered and said to them, do not murmur among yourselves. 
No one, again, complaining and grumbling, mm -hmm. right? They have the same heart as, as our forefathers. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the father except he who is from God. He has seen the father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the men in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Yahudis, they therefore quarreled amongst themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Yahushua said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Not cannibalism. Uh, yes, not cannibalism. <laughs> Spiritual. Spiritual, yes. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead, he who eats this bread will live forever. And um, it's beautiful because because as us being post Messiah coming down, being birthed on earth, dying and resurrecting, we're able to see the scriptures in in a fuller manner, in a way that the prophets desire to see, right? So to be able to see the coming Messiah. Um, when the Israelites were in the wilderness at this point that they were talking about and they're grumbling and, and Yahuwah is, is saying, I'm going to give you the bread of, you know, the bread from heaven. He's obviously referring to manna at that time. But being where we're at today nowadays, we can see that it was, it was always supposed, everything that Yahuwah did was to showcase himself, his glory, his power, his majesty, to exalt his name, to exalt the Messiah, which is him in the flesh. So that manna that he was providing to, to be able to, to feed them, to nourish them, points to our Messiah, Yahushua, that does the same thing. When, when he's talking about eating of, of his flesh and drinking of his blood, he, he's not talking about chewing on his body. That, that, no, we're not talking about cannibalism. He's talking about the deeper aspects of being a part of his vine, of actually being grafted into him, which he is the root of David, taking hold on him for our sustenance. And it's not just this fleshly body, which is going to die anyway. We're, we're accepting going to his cover. death and accepting his... What? No, 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 go ahead. No, I'm just, no, you can keep going. I was just trying to let you say it, but it's, it's you know, drink my blood and, and eat my flesh is accepting who I am. It's, he's the bread of life, spiritual lingo, spiritual language. He is the bread of life. He is what sustains us. He is what gives us life spiritually Physically, Yahushua created us in the beginning. God said in the beginning, let there be light, and there was light. Yah Yahuwah breathed his, the breath of life into the nostrils of Adam. Like, that's Yahushua. Mm -hmm. Yahushua gives us, he is the light of the world. Mm -hmm. He Hallelujah. gives us life. He is the bread and water. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, like, when he's talking this stuff, he's he speaks metaphorical languages for those who the have parables. ears to hear yeah mm -hmm. like the parables we were just learning about in matthew mm -hmm. um you know he speaks in parables for those who have ears to hear and, and eyes to see mm -hmm. you know obviously he's not talking about cannibalism he's talking about if you accept me if you receive me if you embrace the fact that i purchased you with my blood that i die i, I will die for you i'm going to die for you he's giving them clues and hints that he's going to die for them right mm -hmm. here by saying these kinds of words yeah but uh, that's all I want to say. Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to this aspect um, back in Yuhukana and John, uh, verse 34, where it says, Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Right? So we see this, this, this desire, uh, this original surface desire. And Yahushua said to them, I'm the bread of life. And then, you know, he goes through everything. And he says, but I said to you that uh, you have seen me, and yet you do not believe we have to be careful with that initial springing up, you know, especially when people hear the gospel, there's different type of, of seeds and, uh, excuse me, different type of hearts um, where some 
have this initial seed of hearing the gospel and they spring up with, with joy, but they have no root. And so within Yehukanan, we see this, this initial desire, this initial spring, of, ooh, you know, what's this bread that you're talking about? giving life all the time. And, and then he starts explaining that it's himself. And then it, they can't take root in him, you know, and we have to be the opposite. We have to root and ground ourselves within, um, within the Messiah.